and welcome everybody to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be looking at chapter 15 in Zumdal, the 7th edition, Acid Base Equilibria. When we last left off, we barely got through titration terms, common ion effect, and the Henderson Hasselbach equation. So now what we're going to be looking at is the details and mathematics of titrations. Everybody's favorite thing, right? So before we go into any of the actual math of a titration, let's just review a little bit about um, weak acids and bases and about how their equilibria work. So let's consider a solution that is made by mixing 0.1 moles of HCN, that's the K of HCN, with 0.4 moles, or sorry, 0.04 moles of NaOH in one liter of aqueous solution. What are the major species immediately upon mixing? Okay, in other words, before the reaction starts here, okay, like really, what are we going to have mostly? And so hopefully we can identify these as being our primary major species. Why? Um, well, <laughs> on the next slide, we'll talk about why certain things are not included. Um, but uh, you know what? Actually, we might want to just move on to the next slide. So I don't give away too much. So notice that NaOH combined together was not a major species, right? We had Na plus, um, and you have like OH minus. But why, right? Why is um, NaOH not a major species? Well, it's because it's a strong base and it completely dissociates, right? Another thing that you should have noticed, right, is that we had HCN, um, but we didn't have H plus CN minus as major species, and that's because hopefully you recognize that HCN is a weak acid and does not dissociate very much. So if I go back now, the original, <laughs> the original uh, question here, uh, we had HCN, okay, because it doesn't dissociate very much, right? We have Na plus and OH minus because it's a, it's a strong base, so they does dissociate completely. And of course, water is going to be a major species because we're mixing it. And so water is always going to be involved. So in case you were wondering why NaOH and hydronium and you know cyanide ions were not major species, like right when we mixed it, that's the reason why. Now, what reaction would occur when we mixed those two things together? Well, hopefully, right, if we're looking at acid-base reactions, we can identify that the strongest acid, okay, this is a weak acid, but of our choices when we were mixing things together, HCN is the best choice. And OH- will be our base because it is the strongest base available, uh, that when we mix them together, we would be making water and we would have cyanide ions as a byproduct. And so what would be our major species after this reaction? Has occurred, right? So after the reaction has occurred, we would end up with something like this, right? We would end up with HCN still because it doesn't dissociate completely, CN minus water, and notice that OH minus wouldn't be present, right? Yes, sodium would still be floating around, right? I mean, it's clearly still here in some capacity. It's just it's not included in our um, in our net ionic equation, but it would still be there. But keep in mind, right, that OH- would not be present. And the reason why OH- wouldn't be present is because it had been completely transformed into water at the end of our reaction. Okay, so let's go through actual titration-y questions. So calculate the pH of a solution made by mixing 0.2 moles of uh, acetic acid, that's the Ka of acetic acid, with 0.3 or I keep saying 0 0.3, 0 0.03 moles of NaOH in one liter of aqueous solution. All right, let's write down our balanced equation here. All right, so I've got acetic acid. I've got OH minus ions, and when I mix them together, I would be making some water, and I would have acetate ions as a byproduct. So remember, whenever you're given something like this, this is a titration, basically, right? I'm adding a particular amount um, of, you know, sodium hydroxide to this. So we want to look at the stoichiometry first. So the way we look at the stoichiometry is looking at a BCA diagram. Now you might say, 
Isn't this just an ICE diagram? Kind of, but an ICE diagram is specifically uh, for things that are at equilibria here, and we're just dealing with the stoichiometry. So we're just dealing with the moles and stuff first. So you always want to deal with moles first before you deal with equilibria, which is always in molarity. Okay? Okay, so um, let's start filling things in. So before, what do we have? Well, 0 0.2, 0 0.03, and I would have zero um, acetate ions at that point. Now, what's going to happen? Well, it's a one-to-one -one relationship here in our balanced equation. So I would react my OH- minus with my acetate ion. And so I would basically subtract these from each other. And I would add then, because I would be making that quantity of acetate ions. So notice the OH is zero now. It would totally react. And my acetate ion, or sorry, my acetic acid, would go down by a little bit, and I would be left with 0.17 moles. My acetate ion would go up by the amount 0 0.03 moles. Okay, now, okay, now here's the key. Now I can think about the equilibrium. So now that I've dealt with the stoichiometry and I have these numbers, I can now deal with the actual equilibrium. So now I'm going to look at an ICE diagram. Okay, now keep in mind that it says one liter of aqueous solution. So that means that from the previous slide, I don't actually have to convert any of these to molarity. Because <laughs> they're already, if it's everything's in a liter of solution, then I would just be dividing by one liter. And so it's kind of a cop out. But that means that these amounts would be the same. So I had 0.170 moles. And so all I would do is divide by one liter. And now I have 0 0.170 molar solution of acetic acid. <laughs> So it is kind of cheating, right? Basically zero. And then right here, my acetate ion, same thing. I had 0 0.030 moles, but divide by one liter, now I have molarity. Now what is going to happen at equilibrium here, right? Into my equilibrium. I'm going to be losing this. I'm going to be gaining this. So we're doing our nice quadratic equation, right? I've got my Ka here. So that is what I'm going to set everything equal to. This is my first part. This is my second part. And I divide everything by this part. Remember, it's always products divided by reactants. And water isn't involved. Now, I'm not going to go over how to use the quadratic equation. If you want to know how to do the quadratic equation stuff, watch our chapter 14 video instead, okay? Because chapter 14 went over the quadratic equation, all that stuff. So I'm going to assume you can do quadratic equation stuff. And so what does X end up being when you solve for it? It ends up being this, 0 0.000102. Now, what do I do to get the pH? Well, the pH is just the negative logarithm of X here because this is hydronium concentration. So I get 3.99. Now, this is the way that you can solve for pH is totally this way, using exactly what we learned in chapter 14. Now I'm going to teach you a shortcut. <laughs> so you might think, wow, I did a lot of work, did the quadratic equation. Is there a shorter way of doing it? Yes, there is. So how does this shortcut work? Well, notice, right, that I am ignoring the minus x here, and I'm ignoring the plus x here. So I'm just doing approximate symbols. And that's because they're going to be a really tiny, tiny, tiny amount. But because I am in the uh, like I'm in the region before the equivalence point, I'm technically in the buffer region. And so because I'm in the buffer region, I'm allowed to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And so remember, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is the pH equals the pKa plus the logarithm of this over this. Now all I got to do is plug that in. I have my Ka, so I can take the negative logarithm of that. I have my concentration of my conjugate base. It's right here. I just take the log of that divided by, again, this. I have my concentration of my weak acid. So I can actually plug this in instead. The negative logarithm of the Ka right here plus the log of 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.170, you still get 3.99. So both of those are valid ways of solving for the pH of something in the buffer region. It's up to you to decide kind of which one you want to do.
um, or what the problem is asking, maybe it could give you a clue. Maybe if it's you know asking for something very specific, or if it asks you to explain or show you know complete work or something, maybe that would be something that you would use instead of the henderson hasselbach equation. But keep in mind that the henderson hasselbach equation is there to make your life easier. So let's do another one. Calculate the pH of a 100 milliliter solution of 0 0.0, or sorry, 0 0.100 molar acetic acid, which has a Ka value of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. All right, well, it doesn't seem that difficult, I guess, right? So notice here that it doesn't say I'm mixing, you know, acetic acid with anything. <laughs> And so because it doesn't say that, I'm probably at the start of my titration, right? So if I'm at the start of the titration, that happens before I've added any of my titrant. If it's saying that I'm adding NaOH or I'm adding HCl, that would be probably in the buffer zone as long as you haven't reached your equivalence point yet. So here, I can just kind of do what I did in chapter 14. I can just do an IC diagram right away. And so I've got 0.1, right? Because it's a 0.1 molar solution. Don't even need to worry about how much I was given here. Doesn't matter. Like, I don't even need to use that. Um, I'm going to have about zero. Um, here, I should have zero. What's my change? Well, I'm going to lose some of this, and I'm going to gain these two things. Add them together for the E. So 0.1 minus X, that's just X, that's just X. I have my Ka value. So I set it up with these multiplied together to get X squared divided by this. Quadratic equation, right? can just find my X. X is 0 0.00133. Right. And to find the pH, what do I do? Well, that's like X is literally the hydronium concentration. So the pH is just equal to the negative logarithm of this, 2.88. So remember, when you're in the buffer region, you need to do stoichiometry first and then look at the equilibrium. So there's a BCA and there's an ICE. Here, didn't need to do that because I'm not actually mixing it with anything. But let's do another one, okay? Let's do one um, where we're looking at something maybe like this. Calculate the pH of a solution made by mixing 100 milliliters of a 0 0.100 molar solution of acetic acid, which has a K value of, for the hundredth time, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, and 50 milliliters of a 0 0.1 molar NaOH solution. Okay, again, I'm starting with 100 milliliters of this. I'm adding 50 milliliters of this. They have the same concentration. So I'm in the buffer zone. I haven't reached the equivalence point yet. BCA diagram. So acetic acid, hydronium ion, water, acetate ion. OK. Now, remember, I want moles for stoichiometry. So 0.1 moles per liter, 100 milliliters of it, I would have to basically take this and multiply by 0.1. So I'd get 0 0.01 moles. Here, same thing. This is in moles per liter. Right here, this is going to be, um, uh, this is in milliliters. <laughs> so I would need to take this, I need to multiply, right? And so I'm going to end up with a tiny amount, 0 0.005 moles. Water doesn't matter. This would be zero currently. So what am I doing? I'm subtracting these from each other. That means I'm making this amount of acetate. And so notice that I start, now I basically cut this in half. This is zero, right? And it should be. And simply by, by the way, I guess I should say, simply by doing this, this is how you know that you haven't reached your equivalence point yet. <laughs> if you had reached your equivalence point, both of these would be zero. Because I ran out of my titrant first, I still have acid left. So I haven't reached my equivalence point yet. Okay, now I can do an IC diagram. Now this is where everybody would start to make some mistakes. <laughs> and the reason why I would say that is because remember, that was moles. I'm looking at molarity for ICE diagrams. 
So I would need to convert that. What is the volume though, right? So great, I had 0 0.005 moles of this. What's the volume? It's the total volume. 100 milliliters plus 50 milliliters is 150 milliliters of volume. So it would actually be 0 0.033 moles per liter for this. All right, zero moles per liter of this. Same thing with this, okay, 0 0.033 moles per liter. Because remember, we have the same amount of moles of both of these, and if the volume is 150, well, they should be the same, right? You should have the same. Minus x plus x plus x, subtract, add, add. What do I have? Well, I have the k value. And so I do my division. Now again, quadratic equation, fantastic. 0 0.000180. I can do the pH of this because that's the hydronium ion concentration, just the negative logarithm of that number, 4.74. But notice it says solving for pH number one. There's a shortcut. How can I do this in a more efficient way? henderson hasselbalch equation, guys. pH, again, is equal to the pK plus the logarithm of our acetate ion over our acetic acid concentration. Notice that these, if I uh, assume, just like I did before, that these are negligible, they're the same number, 0 0.033, 0 0.033. What does that mean? I would be dividing by the same number, that's the logarithm of 1, that means this entire term ends up being 0. So really, at this point, the pH is just equal to the negative logarithm of the Ka value. It's just the pKa. This ends up being 0, you still get 4.74, but a nice shortcut, right? So henderson hasselbalch saves time, but you still have to know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, now let's actually look at the equivalence point for the very first time. This is where everybody always gets lost. Calculate the pH of the solution at the equivalence point. Okay, we have 100 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution of acetic acid, which has a K value of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Every example so far has been that. And we're titrating it with a 0.1 molar NaOH solution. It doesn't tell me how much to add, right? Thankfully, we've already done our balanced equation. It is a one-to-one -one relationship here. How do we find that amount? It is just that good old dilution formula, M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. And notice this, look, it's the same. 0.1, 100. 0.1, V2 has to be 100. Now, keep in mind, right, V2 is 100. That means that I would have to add 100 milliliters of NaOH to 100 milliliters of acetic acid in order to totally neutralize it. That means the total volume at the equivalence point is 200 milliliters, right? Again, picture that setup from the previous video. My analyte, or analyte, sorry, inside of my flask is 100 milliliters. The amount of titrant I'm adding is 100. 100 and 100 is 200 milliliters. Everybody always ends up making that mistake. Total volume, super important. Okay, now let's do a BCA diagram, even though it's boring. Okay, 0.1 moles per liter, 100 milliliters, that's 0 0.01 moles. Same thing for NaOH, because we know that it takes 100 milliliters of it, so that means it's also 0 0.01 moles. I have no acetate ion to start with. Okay, minus, minus, we add 0, 0. That's how I know I've reached my equivalence point. They should both be 0. All of the acid should be neutralized by all of the base. And so my acetate amount is 0 0.01 moles. Remember, for equilibria, it's molarity. And remember, the total volume is 200 milliliters. So I can fill in my IC diagram, 0 0.050 would be my molarity 
because the total volume was 200 milliliters. I put it in yellow and highlighted it for that reason. Okay, I should have no hydroxide at that point, right? Because all of it's gone. Should have no um, acetic acid at that point because it should all be gone. So minus X plus X plus X. In fact, X, X, just like before. Now here's where everybody makes a mistake also. Notice that this balanced equation, right, is acetate ion plus water makes hydroxide and acetic acid. That is not the same as my original equation that I had for the BCA diagram. In fact, this is the inverse, the opposite of it. So the Ka value was 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. I need the Kb value because this is the acetate ion. So how do I find that? Remember, this is the Kw, 1 times 10 to the negative 14. I divide 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 in order to get what the Kb value is. And so the Kb value is 5.5 times 10 to the negative 2, or sorry, times 10 to the negative 10. X times X is X squared, 0 0.05 minus X. Not going to show you how to, again, for the thousandth time, do the quadratic equation, but X is equal to 5.24 times 10 to the negative 6. And again, here's another mistake people make. What is X? Hydroxide concentration. So if I take the negative log of this, it's going to give me the pOH, which is totally fine. Negative log of this is 5.28. But to get the pH of the solution, which is what it was asking for here in blue, I'd take 14, subtract 5.28, and I get 8.72. That's what you do when you reach your equivalence point. The equivalence point has a lot more nuance to it because all of the acid and base from your original titrant and analyte are now gone, and you've now created conjugate base or conjugate acid. <laughs> and so as a result of that, you have to look at the opposite of whatever value was given to you. If it was giving you a Ka, you need to find the Kb. If it was giving you the Kb, you would now find the Ka because now you're doing the opposite. So notice that once you get to that equivalence point, everything flips. You're no longer using the Ka, now you're using the Kb. Or if you were using the Kb originally, now you're using the Ka. Okay, and now please notice, I made a big deal of saying this in the last video, that only for a strong acid and strong base titration is the pH 7 at the equivalence point. Well, if we go back to the previous slide, the equivalence point happened at 8 point something, right? And that's because we were titrating a weak acid with a strong base. When you have a weak acid and a strong base, the equivalence point happens somewhere other than 7. So like I said on the previous one, so if you didn't watch that previous video, make sure you do, but notice that this is a titration of a weak acid, analyte, and a strong base titrant. It is greater than 7. Anytime you have a weak acid and you're mixing it with a strong base and doing integration, you're going to end up with an equivalence point that is greater than 7. What if we're doing the opposite? What if we are titrating 100 milliliters of a 0 0.05 molar solution of ammonia, which is a weak base, with 0.1 molar HCl, which is a strong acid? Well, again, notice we're starting the opposite direction because a weak base, that means we're going to have a pH that's, you know, basic, so it's going to be up here. And so the equivalence point happens below 7. So for a weak base and a strong acid titration, less than 7 is where our equivalence point is going to be. So only strong acid and strong base titrations have exactly 7 for their equivalence point. If you have a weak base or a weak acid, it's going to happen at another point either above or below 7. Let's summarize. What if you are asked to find the pH of something at the beginning of a titration? Remember, I'm just showing this one as an example here. We could also very easily do the opposite. We would just need to flip everything around, right? So we could very easily do this with a, um, a weak base 
and a strong acid. We would just basically have uh, the, the inverse, the flip of this curve here. It would go this direction instead. So at point one, before you've added anything, if it's a strong pH, yeah, or sorry, if it's a strong acid, super easy. Just the negative logarithm of the concentration. Now, if it's weak, you use the ICE diagram like we did in chapter 14, or like we did an example of in this chapter also. Now, what if it's somewhere between number one and number three? That is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. You do a BCA, a BCA table, ICE table, plug it into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, boom, you get the pH. What about at the equivalence point? How do we find the equivalence point? M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. Construct your ICE table. Don't forget that you have total volume to worry about, right? V1 and V2 are added to one another when you're looking at, you know, concentration in your ICE table. Don't forget it's the KB and the POH that you're finding when you actually are solving for, you know, your quadratic or whatever. Or, again, if we're going in the opposite direction, it would be Ka and pH. And since in this situation we're looking at pOH, that means that we would have to convert it to pH. Now, we didn't do an example of what happens beyond the equivalence point. So beyond the equivalence point is pretty boring because beyond the equivalence point, you're basically just adding extra hydroxide. And so it's not a buffer anymore. <laughs> in fact, it's just excess OH minus. So only the OH minus really matters, but don't forget that it's total volume. So if you're wondering why it ends up looking like this, it's because you are basically, every time you add OH, you know, drops of OH to this, you're basically making it more and more basic, but you're also diluting the entire thing as you go. So if you're going above this, that's what you do. Okay, last but not least, indicators. So an indicator marks the end point of a titration by changing color. Now, like I said in the previous video, I like to use the term equivalence point and end point as if they are synonymous with one another, but they are not necessarily the same thing. The end point does not necessarily mean that you've reached your equivalence point, but it does give you a visual clue. And the most common example of that is phenylphthalein. And so phenylphthalein in acid is clear, and then when it switches to base, it becomes pink. Another common example is methyl orange. Like it says here, it turns yellow in basic solution and red in acidic solution. So again, another common example of that. There are several <laughs> indicators to choose from, though, and this is the last slide. So depending on what kind of reaction you're running, um, if you have a highly acidic thing, crystal violet is fantastic. If you have an extremely basic thing, I've never even used this one before. Phenylphthalein is kind of like the most basic one that I've ever used. Um, bromothymol blue is another really good one. Um, bromophenol blue is also a really good one, and thymol blue is also. Anyway, that about does it, basically. Um, hopefully, you have a better idea of how titrations work. Um, titrations are fun, but the math behind them can be a little tedious. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer it. And um, thank you for listening and watching.